All right. Uh, audio and video is up. We are recording. We are live. Welcome to Statics. Man, we're already in lecture 22. Can you believe it? And um, today uh, we ha are assigning the last homework before the exam. So uh, what's going to happen today is uh, we're going to do our uh, the problem we're going to do today is going to set the stage for your last homework problem, which is going to be uh, equilibrium in 3D. Um, we're going to focus on simple supports. Um, and what you're going to find with three-dimensional problems is that, uh, honestly, the, the support conditions don't, I guess, really matter. Um, as long as you can identify the unknowns, the process is the same. And that, that's probably the, the hardest issue, and it's not even really that hard. Once you can figure that out, it, it I'll say this. 3D problems do tend to be kind of long. Uh, they do tend to be just a lot of grunt work, but they, they aren't very, uh, very difficult. Um, give me one second. Okay, so let's, uh, let's check right into it. Um, I want to go to uh, just our basics of equilibrium. So we're going to be dealing in three dimensions, uh, and so we're going to be dealing with six equations of equilibrium. So like I said, the problems aren't hard. They, they're just kind of long. Now, that doesn't mean that we need to solve a six by six system of equations. It does sometimes mean we have to solve a system. And so maybe we have to break out that two by two or three by three equation solver in the Casio. But usually there are some ways that we can, um, that we can get around that. Um, and usually it, it involves your motion. And it's, the point I make, uh, wanna make is that 3D really isn't any different than 2D in terms of a strategy. For instance, if you're going to sum your moments, sum your moments about the point that has the most unknowns through it, so you can isolate the, the other stuff that you need to find. Um, and we're going to do the same thing here. Now, I have here on this uh, slide an image of the 2D boundary conditions. Uh, maybe I should take a look at the 3D boundary conditions. Um, they're kind of, it, it might seem kind of complicated. It really isn't. It's just an extension of uh, what we uh, had defined for uh, two-dimensional cases. Um, really, all you need to do it, it, to be able to do is look at these, uh, um, you know, look at the problem that, that you're assessing and say, okay, I'm dealing with a, a ball and socket joint, which is basically a pinned boundary condition. And if it's a pinned boundary condition, I'm going to have three unknowns, uh, an unknown force in the X direction, an unknown force in the Y direction, and an unknown force in the Z direction. And so if I have those, I can say, all right, let's take those and write out, you know, your, your unknown vectors like you would for any other problem. And then you're just, again, you're applying the same process, the same uh, equations uh, of equilibrium. Again, it, it's really no different. It, it's just uh, maybe a bit, um, maybe a bit more. Now, for instance, if you have a fixed support, you're going to have six unknowns at that support, uh, you know, three forces and three moments. Some of the other combinations, you know, like like a, a, a you know this this heavy duty hinge uh, could not only withstand some axial forces but some bending moments as well. But notice how it would allow uh, motion along the hinge, you know, stuff like that. Um, if you can recognize that uh, when you're defining your free body, the rest is it again. It's, it's easy. It's it's just long. Uh, and I think the easiest way to go through that is to look at an example. So what we have here is a sign. Um, we're going to say it has uniform density and it weighs 270 pounds. Let me explain what that means. Um, uh, this is going to be a topic that we assess a little bit later. Uh, right after the exam, maybe later on. I'll be honest, I'm kind of leaning on going ahead and starting it now, which is the concept of centroids. Um, but when we say that there's a shape that has a uniform density, basically what we're saying is it's not denser in one spot than it is in another, and it doesn't affect, you know, uh, where the location of the centroid is. And for, for sake of discussion, if you have a, a rectangle, you know, when we say centroid, we're basically saying where's the middle of that rectangle. For, for now, ju I just want you to think about it in those terms. And the middle of that rectangle is just, just like it says right in the middle of it. Uh, so we can idealize that sign as a 270 pound magnitude vector just acting downward in the y direction right at the middle of that sign. Um, now, uh, we've got um, uh, this sign is supported by uh, two cables and then this ball and socket joint uh, at A. Now, if you actually follow this along, there's actually five unknowns on this problem because there's 
the three reactions, which, which are going to be at A. When we say ball and socket joint, really we're just talking about basically a pinned connection in 3D. It's kind of like a simple support in three dimensions. Um, and so there's going to be an X, Y, and Z component at A, and there's two cables, uh, C and D. So there's really only five unknowns. So um, what you'll find is that this system is actually going to um, not be able to resist uh, a certain type of bending moment, but it's not going to matter because there's no bending moments uh, applied uh, in that direction. Uh, but that's, you know, that, that, that's really not going to affect uh, how we assess the problem. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to handle this like we would any problem, uh, you know, just like we would in 2D. Now, this uh, problem has three unknowns at A, and then there's one unknown for each cable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sum moments about the support at A, and I don't want to have to deal with those, uh, those unknown forces uh, at A. Uh, that'll leave me a two system that I'm going to need to solve, but we'll, uh, we'll take that uh, one step at a time. Let's, uh, let's just get right into it. Let me stop the share. Okay, so let me, um, let me get situated here because we're going to kind of work through a lot of this together. All right, so here's the, um, here's the problem. And let me start off by, um, by just drawing out some, some unknown forces. And maybe I'll, um, maybe I'll um, use a red pen for that. Okay. Uh, let me see something uh, on that. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, give me one second. I'm not using my podcast microphone that I normally use. Let me see something. Let, let me tr let me see if I can fix that. Might help. Might help if I turned it on. How about now? Is, is that better? That, that's better. Okay. My apologies for that. Okay. All right. So, uh, so what we're gonna do? Uh, let me do like a super quick recap of what I just said because maybe that, that's that's valuable. Um, let me go back to the slides here. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, basically extend our discussion of two dimensions into three dimensions. And really all it's about is identifying your unknown reactions at the, uh, 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 at the supports of the problem we're assessing. And then applying the same strategies that we would in two dimensions than we will in three dimensions. So let me stop the share here, go back to the notebook. Um, Okay, and if you need me to recap anything, please uh, let me know. Okay, so first off, you know, I've got this uh, this support condition here. Maybe the, the first thing I ought to do is write out, you know, my unknown components here. And so this, this uh, support at A, I, I propose that I'm going to have three unknown reactions. And I'm going to draw them along their positive direction. So maybe we'll call this AX. Maybe we'll call this AY. And call this a z um, I also don't know the tension in the uh, in the cables so we're gonna have a tension here maybe we'll call this tension BD and we're gonna have a tension here we'll call this tension I don't know e c maybe something like that and so that's what I'm trying to figure out I'm trying to figure out those five unknowns okay so what I propose from a strategy standpoint is that if we sum moments at A, that's going to eliminate two of those unknowns right off the bat. And that's going to leave us only dealing with uh, the tensile forces in each of those cables. So it's going to be a lot easier to deal with uh, if, we, uh, if we handle that. 
Now, the last thing I do want to write out is there is one vector that we do know. In fact, it's the, the star of the show. It's really the, the whole reason that we're here. And that's the fact that we have a 270 pound vector uh, representing the weight of that sign. Um, so uh, first thing I want to do is I want to start collecting some information. That I think is probably the most uh, important aspect before we even start going into the problems. Um, okay, so let's 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 take care of a couple things. Um, first thing I'm going to determine are some uh, distance vectors. Okay. And if you're wondering why I'm doing this first, uh, here's why. Let's start writing out some of our forces uh, in vector notation. So if I have, let's say, vector A, I know that vector A is going to be AX times I plus AY times J plus AZ times K. Now, I don't know what those values are. I just know that it's going to be taking this form. What about W? like the, the vector representing the weight of the sign. Well, I know that's going to be 0i minus 270j plus 0k. And maybe I should put pounds, you know, next to that since it's in pounds. Um, so I know those vectors. Those are easy. The reason why I'm writing down the distance vectors is what is going to be, what are, what are the two other forces at play? The two other forces at play are, the tension in BD and the tension in CE. And how am I gonna write those? Well, I'm gonna say some magnitude times a unit vector. Some magnitude times a unit vector. And so what I need to do is I need to do a little bit of work right now to determine those unit vectors. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that first because in order to do a, a three-dimensional problem, what you need to be able to do is characterize your forces and your position vectors. Because ultimately what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up all the forces, and then I'm going to add up all the cross products, the R cross Fs. And so adding up all the force vectors is going to be some forces, and then adding up all the cross products is going to be some of moments. That's, that's, how, that's how I'm going to handle this. So the first thing I need is I need the distance vector. So I need distance vector BD and I need distance vector uh, CE. And you could do this however you want. We've discussed two different ways of doing this in class. The first way is to uh, just look at it and see if you can uh, identify it by observation. The other way is, for instance, if we're talking about distance vector BD, we take the coordinates of D minus the coordinates of B, and that gives us the distance vector. Either one works. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just write these out. So for BD, along the x-axis, we're going minus 8 feet. Uh, along the y-axis, we're going, um, what is that, uh, plus 4 feet. And then along the, uh, the z-axis, we're going minus 8 feet. Okay, and so this is in feet. All right, so just to make sure everybody's paying attention, uh, what are we getting for CE? Somebody do the distance vector for CE. I'm going to give you all a sec to see if you can identify that. And just take it one axis at a time. How far do you go in the X? How far do you go in the Y? How far do you go in the Z? And then, you know, follow the, the direction of the axes. Negative 6i, positive 3, or hold on. The only thing is I got, hold on. I've got a positive 3, yeah, okay, okay, we're, we're on the same page, yeah. Minus 6i, positive 3j, positive 2k. Okay, all right, exactly right, okay. And so we need those because we need unit vectors. 
And so what I mean by unit vectors is in order to determine a, a unit vector, we're taking a vector and dividing it by its own magnitude. So for BD, um, I need the magnitude. That's, you know, minus 8 squared uh, plus positive 4 squared plus minus 8 squared. And then the square root of all of that. And so let's see if I can do that in my head. 8 squared is 64. 64 is 64 is 128. Plus 16 is 144. Square root of that is 12. So therefore, lambda BD is going to be, all right, so we're going to take 8 over 12, 4 over 12, 8 over 12. So it's going to be, I think it's like minus 2 thirds I. Um, plus one third J minus two thirds K. Okay. And so maybe what I'll do down here is I'll just, I'll write that down. Ooh. And then minus two thirds I minus one third J minus two thirds K. Okay, uh, wouldn't it be 6i? Oh, I'm, it would be if I had it written correctly. I, I, am, I am so sorry. It should be EC because, man, I'm glad you pointed that out. This is backwards. I'm doing everything alphabetically. Man, thank you for that, Mr. I had that, yeah, because... Because you're going from point B to point D, so you need to go from point E to point C. So you're it's you're right that it would be six I for E for C E, but I had it backwards. It's E C. Man, I, I'm sorry about that, but but thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, that was that was a that was a a, a big no no on my part. Yeah, we're, the force is going from E to C, so that's why it's negative. Okay, now uh, the magnitude of EC, we're going to do uh, negative 6 foot squared plus 3 foot squared uh, plus 2 foot squared. Let's see if I can do that one in my head. Okay, 6 times 6 is 36. Uh, 3 times 3 is 9, so that's 45. 49, so that's 7 feet. So... Lambda EC, not CE, is uh, minus 6 over 7I um, plus 3 sevenths J and then minus 2 sevenths K. Okay. I, again, I, I apologize. That was a that was just a, a straight up mistake on my part. But I'm glad that you caught that. Um, yes, it would. That's another one. Man, I haven't had much coffee today. I think that's what it is. <laughs> you are exactly right. Okay. All right. Um, barring my little typos, um, which are. <laughs> <laughs> which are uh, apparently pretty numerous this afternoon. Um, everybody good so far on the process? So we've got we've got four uh, uh, force vectors here, and we we know everything about one of them. Uh, two of them we know their direction, but they're not their magnitude. And then the third one, the reaction at A, we don't have a clue about. Uh, but if you isolate the unknown quantities, there are five of them. There's the AX, the AY, the AZ, and then the magnitude of T or of ED, and then the magnitude of EC. Those are our five unknowns. Now, in order to uh, assess this, the last thing that we need are position vectors. Now, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to um, scroll down a bit because I don't want to keep scrolling uh, back and forth, but I also I don't want 
to clutter that one image because I want, you know, this is the image with all the forces and then I want this image with all the position vectors. So let me, let me use a different color here. Let's go with green. Okay. All right. So hopefully everybody's clear on the idea that it would make sense on this problem to sum our moments about point A. Okay. In other words, if we sum moments about point A, three of those unknowns get eliminated and it makes solving for the remaining unknowns a lot easier. Now, you don't have to do that. I can sum moments about anywhere, but it just seems a lot easier to, to do that from a, from a strategy standpoint. So what that means is if here is, oh, I thought I chose green. Green. So if we're summing moments about point uh, point A right here, what that means is that we need three vectors, three position vectors. We're going to need one position vector that gets us to the center of that uh, that sign, where we're where we've placed that force. And so I'm going to call that R W or maybe I should say uh, 2w from point A. And then we're going to need two more vectors for the, for the two cables. Okay? Again, because we're summing moments at A, we don't have to deal with position vectors 2A because they'd, they'd all be zero. Um, and if you'll forgive me, I'm going to kind of draw these on top of one another. Uh, we need a position vector that measures to point E, and then another position vector that measures to point B. So we need an R B uh, from point A, and then we need um, R E to point A. Okay. And, and really they're laying on top of one another. So I, I kind of cheated a little bit by drawing one a little bit above the other, but I just wanted to emphasize that there's two vectors there. There's a vector B to A and then our 2B from A and then 2E from A. Okay, so position vectors. All right, so fortunately these are pretty easy to write. We've got R B A, R E A, E A, then R W A. Okay. So position vector R to B from A is pretty easy. I mean, how do you go, like, what, like how would you describe that vector, you know, for, from A to B? It would just be AI. That's all there is to it. It's just along the x-axis, right? From uh, to E from point A, like, if, if tell you what, if, if uh, to B from A is AI, what is to E from A? You tell me. Six I, there you go. And help me out. Why don't you do the next one? Now keep in mind that is going to the center of the sign. So the sign is eight foot wide along the x-axis and it's five foot deep along the y-axis. There you go. So so it would be four I but in a minus 2.5 J. J. And these are all in feet. Okay. So before I move on, are there any questions? Does this make sense? Everybody good on this? All right. Good deal. Okay. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to start applying our equations of equilibrium. But so, so our equations of equilibrium, we have the sum of the forces and the sum of the moments. Okay. Now the sum of the forces, all I would do is take those four force vectors, the A, the W, the T, B, D, and the T, E, C, and sum those up and say, 
sum of those vectors has to equal zero. And I, I'd honestly kind of have a little bit of a hot mess to deal with because I'd have, you know, like five unknowns. And it would just be a mess. The nice thing about summing moments is that we can eliminate some of those unknowns because we're summing moments at A. But it does mean we've got some cross products to do. Now, I propose that for this problem, we have three cross products. We're summing moments at A, so we need the moment generated by the BD cable, the moment generated by the EC cable, and the moment generated by the weight. Okay, so uh, it doesn't really matter what order that we do them in, but I'm going to do the weight one first, just because, I don't know, I kind of think it might be easier to handle. So, uh, cross products. In other words, our moments are R cross F. And I'm going to need some room for this. So I'm going to scroll down a bit. Oh, goodness. The scrolling on this one note sometimes is just kind of nuts. Okay. All right. So if we're summing moments at A, let's take each component one at a time. So let's start off with weight of sign. So we have our position vector, which you told me was 4i minus 2.5j. And then we have our force vector, which essentially was the weight, which is minus, I think it was minus 270J. All right. So what that means is we need a moment from that weight. So R crossed with W. Okay, so four, uh, four minus 2.5 and zero, and then zero minus 270 and zero. And so we're going to have an Apollo junk times I minus Apollo junk times J plus Apollo junk times K. Okay, all right. So remember how to do this. You know, you can use your finger if you want or your pencil and sort of cover up the row and the column. So if I cover up the row and the column associated with I, I'm going to get the big, a big fat goose egg because I'm going to have zeros uh, along that column. So it's zero. For J, I'm going to get, again, I think a big fat goose egg. But here I'm going to get 470, or sorry, 4 times minus 270 which I think that's uh, minus 1080 uh, and zero. So I'm getting minus 1080K. I'm going to put that on the board so that I don't forget that. All right. Um, and again, if I got a, a, an error or a, or a typo or something, you let me know. It's very possible. Okay, now let's do uh, tension in uh, cable, uh, what is it, uh, let's do the first one, BD. So we had an, a position vector, so that, that connects to point B, so we're using that one, so that's 8I, and then our tension vector now, here, here's where things get messy a bit algebraically. So, we have BD. Um, what we've got is we've got, um, uh, what was it, tension BD times minus two-thirds plus one-third minus two-thirds, right? Now, I'm going to show you some, some tricks here to make your life a little easier. Okay, so this is a cross product that we need to determine. And unfortunately, we've got our, you know, our calculator, like our Casio, or whatever calculator you use, may not be able to handle variables. It may not be able to handle T. You know, you have to do it with numbers. So 
Let's see. What I'm going to do is this. I am going to say 800, zero, and I'm just going to say uh, minus two thirds, one third, minus two thirds, and then multiply the whole thing by TBD. Oh, sorry, I mean do that. In other words, you can actually factor that variable out of the entire cross product. In other words, you don't need a like a T here and a T here and a T here. You can factor that out. Um, and numerically, we can just evaluate the, the cross product and multiply the whole thing by the uh, uh, by the tension. So let's let's see what we get when we do that. So we've got uh, I times a pile of junk minus J times a pile of junk plus K times a pile of junk. And let's see what we get. So the I's, we do that. I think we're getting a goose egg. I, I tell you what, um, I want you all, before I, I, I I'm going to involve you all a bit. I'm going to erase that. You all tell me what just you're getting for this cross product. you got enough practice doing cross products. I'm going to let you check this out on your own. I want somebody in chat to give me the answer. I'm going to do this on my calculator, and I'm going to let you all check this out. So I'm going to let you check this out. I'm going to wait for somebody to give me an answer. Uh, since I already wrote it, I'll go ahead and tell you that this term is zero. But I want somebody to give me the other terms. I'll give you a sec on this because I know it's I know it's probably been a while. Anybody got an answer for me on this? Does make minus 16 thirds for J and 8 thirds for K? That's what I'm getting. That's exactly what I'm getting. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, yeah, but, but minus um, 16 thirds in here, 8 thirds here, but the negative times a negative, because remember, this is positive, that's negative, that's positive. So the two negatives cancel out, and you get 16 thirds J plus eight-thirds K. So what Mr. Uh, what Mr. Ashworth said was correct, that it's negative 16 thirds when you do the fraction. But remember, when you do a cross product, you have I times a pile of junk minus J times a pile of junk plus K times a pile of junk. You always flip your signs. So if this term is negative, then negative times a negative is a positive. All right. So I'm getting uh, 16 thirds J plus 8 thirds K. But even then, that's not correct because I forgot something. What I forgot was my unknown. Because all I did was take the, you know, those are just the numerical quantities. Remember that unknown, that tension, 
is baked in there. Okay, so I can't forget that. All right. So if you understand that, let's do the, the last one. I'll move that down here. EC. So R E A is six I, and then the tension in EC is the magnitude times, and then this one was minus six sevenths I. Um, plus three sevenths J and then plus two sevenths K. So therefore the moment from that force is the cross product of the position vector and that. So we've got I J six zero zero and then minus six sevenths three sevenths two sevenths but then don't forget the magnitude we gotta we gotta make sure that we include that so tell you what um you got enough practice with cross product somebody tell me just the cross product um the the final answer um i'm gonna multiply the whole thing times that tension uh, on the outside. So you, you can just tell me the numerical part in the chat, but somebody give me the, the cross product of this, uh, this, um, this vector. And while you're doing that, I'm going to do it here. Six. Wait a minute. Hold on. Did I get a sign wrong? Let me check something. Let's see. I did get a sign wrong this whole time. This is minus. That's minus. So, this is a negative term right there. Whoops. Let's redo that. Okay. I'm getting, um, I'll go ahead and help you out with this. And I'm getting zero I, but I'm getting 12 sevenths uh, J. And then 18 sevenths K. All right, it looks like everybody else got that. The the negatives again. My apologies, that's on me. I just must be having an off day on the on the signs here. Okay, so moment uh, EC is um, 12 sevenths J and 18 sevenths K. Times T, C. Okay. All right. So, what I'm now going to do? So, again, barring my <laughs> my uh, uh, um, errors in arithmetic here, now what I'm going to do is apply static equilibrium. Okay, and. Let me show you how to do this. Whenever you're doing 3D problems, the first thing that you probably ought to do is your sum of moments expression. Because usually what you're doing is you're summing moments about a particular point to try and eliminate as many unknowns as you can. Like physics and theory don't really care what order you do things in. But that doesn't mean that you don't want to be sitting there solving a six by six system if you can avoid it. 
So summing moments first tends to always reduce the amount of work that you have to do. So let's sum those first. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite these, um, these vectors. So B, D, uh, E, C, and W. Let me rewrite those uh, and sort of line them up a bit. Okay. So for the I components, there aren't any I components in any of these vectors. There's no, not one of the W, the BD, or the, the EC. But the BD does have J components, the J component here. I'm going to put the term in there. I'm going to say 12 sevenths tension times J. This one has uh, 16 thirds. Tension EC, that's supposed to be J, not I. But there's there's a zero J term here. There isn't a J term for the moment from the sign. Uh, as for the rest, I've got positive. Um, so this is uh, eight thirds and eighteen sevenths of eight thirds. T B D K. Um, Wait, no, I, um, eight, 18, that's 18 sevenths. This is 18 sevenths. This is eight thirds. T E C K. And this one, this one, I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to say positive, and then I'm going to say minus 1080 K. And, and the reason I'm writing it like that is so I can just look at all of my parentheses terms. In fact, what you can do is you can look at this the way that I have it written. You actually already have your equations of equilibrium written out because what you can say is, and I'll do this in another color so that's kind of clear. Um, if I look at all of these terms here that are lined up and all of these terms that are lined up, I've got, I've got them lined up kind of neatly. Uh, if I take all of these terms and sum them up, those are the sum of the moments along the y-axis, and these are the sum of the moments along the z-axis. So by, by writing them sort of in that grid-like fashion and just lining up all the terms, I, I've got my equations. So what does that look like? Well, let's take a look at the sum of the moments in the y-equation, sum of the moments in the y, uh, about the y-axis. So I've got 12 sevenths TBD plus 16 thirds TEC is zero. And then if I sum the moments about the Z axis, I've got 18 sevenths um, P. Hold on for a sec. I've got something backwards here. Something doesn't look right. What am I doing here? Oh, I think I know what I did. Let me see. Hold on. Did I get those backwards? Is that what I did? Man, what is up with my my algebra today? Let me see something. Hold on. Chat's being quiet and not catching my errors here. Whew. But I but that I, I gotta take some responsibility on that one. I'm I'm I am uh I am getting these these subscripts all sorts of backwards. This is BC. This is BC. BC. Man, I am a. I apologize. I need to brew myself a pot of coffee. Let me just restart this. All right. Let me let me just erase all this and restart. So if I sum moments in the y direction. I'm going to get um, 12 sevenths TEC plus 16 thirds TBC equals zero. That looks a lot better. Wait, BD. <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. My goodness. Man, 
I, you know, it's funny. I, I just told my structural analysis class this morning that you need proper bookkeeping. And here I am. I'm, 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 de I'm defying all of my rules. Now, this one's going to be 18 sevenths TEC uh, plus 8 thirds TBD. And that's going to be minus 10. 80 equals zero. But what I can do is I can take that and move it on over to the other side uh, and instead rewrite it as, you know, just equals 1080 because I can add it on over to the other side. What I've got here is two equations and two unknowns. And so how do we handle that? We go to our trusty Casio FX115 ES Plus, and we say, okay, I'm going to go to mode. I'm going to go to five for equation. Uh, I'm going to go to option one, and now I've got a, a two by two system here. So 12 divided by seven, and then 16 divided by three. I gotta gotta go down here. Uh, Eighteen divided by seven. Eight divided by three, and then ten eighty. And so I x is six thirty. Four hundred five point two. Uh, and so you can use your two equations, two unknowns, to uh, to to chug that out. We're running out of time, uh, and I don't want to rush this, So, but let me show you something real quick. Uh, and I'm also going to check the math here just to make sure I don't have any like pluses where minuses should be because I think I've had so many little things happen that I just, I, I don't know. Um, but I want to I wanna illustrate what happens here at the end. So... If I go back to my original set here, uh, if I go back here, what happens is this. So here's my uh, my unknown, you know, my set of unknowns. Uh, when I get down to my moment expression, I have two equations and two unknowns. And those two equations and two unknowns, I end up solving for uh, TBD and TEC. And so I get the, the terms that I got. I'm going to check the math on that and make sure I didn't, you know, you know, have any typos there. <laughs> Um, next thing that you do is you sum your forces. So basically I add up all of these vectors and I say, okay, add up all the vectors, set each component equal to zero. So I components, all the J components, all the K components. And what you'll find is you have one unknown in each direction. You have an unknown AX, an unknown AY, an unknown AZ, and there you go. It's a, it's a pretty straightforward solution. Um, barring my you know, many little errors that just seem to add up, and I apologize about that. Um, are there any questions about the method? Again, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this and make sure I, I don't know, I, I, I want to make sure I, I got the, the the little things corrected before I uh, before I post this. What I'll probably end up doing is posting a, a, a supplemental video to this to just say, okay, let's just go through this and make sure I got everything uh, correct. Uh, um, but but barring the um, TE is six uh, six thirty and TVD is two hundred two point five. Yes, that is correct. Assuming that I did my my math correct, but with all the little errors, I'd like to go through it and just make sure that that I I'm, I'm giving you all correct uh, advice. So what I'll do is I'll, um, let me say this: if everything's correct, then yes, that is the answer. Um, if I have a little plus where a minus should go, then don't trust that. But I'll post a quick little like five minute video uh, to uh, uh, to the YouTube playlist to sort of you know recalculate this example because again I don't want to I don't want to um, lead you all astray. But assuming that this is correct, then yes, your your um, your uh, TEC would be six thirty and your TBD would be two hundred two point five. But again, I want to check it. What I think we're going to do on Friday is I'm not going to give you all any homework, um, but 
I'm going to go through and I'll probably find another problem. Uh, and this one, I, I will probably work in advance. <laughs> My apologies again. Um, any questions though about the method? I tell you what, here, here's one thing I am going to do before I call it, and I'll post this on Teams. I assigned a homework assignment that I said was due Friday, but if you all want, I would extend it until Monday if you'd like, because I'm not going to give you another homework assignment. But um, if anybody wants to hold off and turn it in later, I won't hold it against you, because I don't want you to feel, be like, well, I, would, I didn't understand what to do because of all the errors. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have, I won't assign another homework assignment on Friday, but I'll give you more time uh, on this one. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's sort of have a reset, and then I'll extend the deadline on this assignment until Monday. I, let's do that. I think that's fair. Uh, but Mr. Ashworth, you are correct. The rest would just be to sum the forces in the x direction. I'll finish this, and then I'll pick another problem to walk through in class on Friday, and then Monday we'll we'll be uh, we'll be prepared for our exam review. Let's do that because uh, because really we don't have like I mean we're we're rocking and rolling on 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 time, and and I don't. Uh, to rush this. Um, unfortunately, it's 151 and we kind of have to call it, so I'm going to stop the recording, but I'll post a, like a clarification video on this and we'll, we'll redo another example on, on Friday. Uh, that's all I have, everybody. I will see you all on Friday.